it has gotten real today. Whoa, that's a little scary how addicted to this I am. Is an awful realization to have. Is post dopamine detox, and I'm very excited to tell you all about it. So before I do, be sure to go and like and subscribe and all of that fun stuff. And if you want to know a little more about why I did this, then definitely go check out my previous video on this. I also feel like hopefully you will see the very extreme difference I feel like in my energy. I, I don't know if that can be portrayed over a video. I'm just more grounded and less reactive and less frazzled. I know I don't want to be that person that's like, this is amazing and sell you false things, but there has been little in my life that I have done because I am like, oh my gosh, I have tried so many things and I'm really into self-development. There has been little that has given me this much result in this little a time, real quick. A dopamine detox is just abstaining from quick hit behaviors. Social media scrolling for me, especially binge watching Netflix, even binge eating, at sex, drugs, alcohol, all of these things that like give you a really quick burst without actually having to do any work for it. I compare this a lot to exercise because exercise is something that you have to do work and then you get a hit of dopamine. And so that's something that's really healthy, especially if you are even a little bit like me. When I like sweet potatoes, I'm going to be eating sweet potatoes for like lunch for an entire year and I still eat oats for breakfast because I'm just like this is the best thing it's packed with all these nutrients like it's just so cool it's a grain you get really invested and really excited and involved in things and so you can naturally see how easy it would be for someone like me to fall prey to something like choosing things that give me instant hits instead of choosing the things that I love and that are good for me um, like exercise, like making good meals, like creating, like dancing, like calling a friend, when I can just say, nah, my choice is between doing absolutely no work and getting that quick hit of dopamine or having to do a little bit of work, go out of my comfort zone and maybe like, ugh, I have to like dial a number for a friend and uh, muster up some energy to talk to them, even though it's something I want to do, something I love to do. One is just easier, and so obviously you're going to choose the easier thing. But what happens if you take the easier thing away, and suddenly you're alone with your thoughts? And suddenly everything you've been running from, you have to face. That, my friends, is the dopamine detox. I'm going to show you a clip of um, night number two. I don't know, it was real tough. Day two of my, can you get some good lighting? That's better. Of my dopamine detox, and it has gotten real today. Actually, it got real last night. Doom scrolling, <laughs> that's a fun one, like social media in general. That's the one that I've really worked on taking a break from. So I'm posting, but I'm not consuming. And it is so, like, your, your fingers naturally just scroll. No way I'm taking a break from exercise, because that's something I've just, like, come off of a bit of a off-season and a break. My roomie and I just sat and studied, or she was making notes, and I was studying, and we were listening to music, so obviously not taking a break from music, but now that she's gone, I'm trying to not have the music on in the background, and maybe listen to a podcast or something, constantly triggered by these little hits of dopamine, that our reptilian brain is obviously going to choose those things, instead of the things that require you to put a little bit of effort in, in order to gain the dopamine. Thinking from a reptilian brain point of view, if you have the option to get a quick hit of dopamine, or you have to do some work before getting the dopamine. It's not that you have a lack of willpower, like I said in the last video, it's literally brain chemistry. So yes, when you cut those out for a little while, you get to maybe reset it a little bit. Is that what I'm doing right now? It's been a really interesting experiment. As I mentioned last night, the first night was fun because that was the first video where I just took some, was just learning about the concept and I took a bath and I was like, oh, yay, a little break from social media. But today, whew, when you put yourself in triggering situations and you usually have something to take the edge off, drink or do anything like that like once a week. And so it's not something that I often do, but I do know that when I go into a triggering situation, it's something that I can definitely use. Uh, not that I always do use it, but anyway. I think it's more the fear of going into that situation knowing you don't have access to that thing that you usually use. That was what was the most scary. And even this morning, I was sitting deleting some 
emails and whatnot because you know you can't go on social media and then I was like no why am I still spending time on my screen so I did the Mel Robbins 5 for 3 to 1 put my screens down and I was like oh, man you see I was freaking deleting emails and that's like made me late for CrossFit and it, that was a bit of an aha moment because I, I wondered if I am the source of most of my own problems which is an awful realization to have because it's not you we all have the same 24 hours yet some people are really managing to get everything in on time and like get so much done within that time and I'm wondering where is my time going and I'm starting to see where it's going and it's it's never fun to see that mirror and usually I just spend a lot of time on screens and today I spend a lot of time studying my kinesiology notes and spending time with my family I made soup, like I watered all my plants, I put them all back in the house, uh, went, did a crazy CrossFit workout, and usually after a tough CrossFit workout, especially on a weekend, and I'm all about the treats, but that treat definitely onsets like a whole day of unhealthy eating because of, you know, like some of the patterns that we've got in place. There's a big debate about like, you know, not labeling food, good and bad, but I work in the health and wellness industry. I understand that some foods are health promoting, whereas some foods literally have zero benefit for you or whatsoever. Your own relationship with food, you know, that's a, that's a whole nother story for another day. I'm just saying that in my own personal experience, that usually spirals me. And now this is the worst. It's seven o'clock and all I want to do is like take the edge off somehow because I'm alone and even my mum phoned and said like do you want to come for dinner and like a bra with us and I was actually like no if I'm doing this dopamine detox thing right I've got to not do that and it like there is a big pit in my stomach because it's so easy for me to just you know I don't know eat a little something and you feel better watch a little Netflix really phoned a bunch of people like it's just yeah you kind of just realize that you are numbing a lot of the things and I can like even feel like an underlying feeling of, oh, there's actually like some stuff I should be, be, be thinking through and dealing with. And so, yeah, that's what I'm going to do now. Maybe, maybe not. Maybe I'm just going to journal and read and get to bed super early. So weird. Maybe I'm going to make a smoothie bowl. What, what do you do without those like dopamine triggers? It's really crazy. So, yeah, I'm going to write a little bit about this experience as well. I think that's a really good use of my time now. And then I will update you guys tomorrow on day three and some more, I don't know, realizations. So see you then. There were definitely times where there was a struggle, even if my eyes could like just naturally like click on it. And I was like, whoa, that's a little scary how addicted to this I am. But I suddenly just had space. I didn't feel the need to respond to things. I wasn't comparing myself. I was creating more freely because I didn't know what other people were creating. I was creating, but I wasn't consuming. So I was still posting stories and I'm posting YouTubes and posting Instagrams, but I wasn't scrolling and consuming other people's. And only today I replied to like all of my messages and I'll go and like reply to all my comments. But I realized how we must all be feeling, you know, constantly in this reactive comparing state of seeing what everyone else's highlight reel is doing. And this really shook me when I spoke to one of my best friends last week and she was telling me that she feels like a bad mom sometimes and gets mom guilt. And I was like, excuse me, you are one of those people that were like born to be a mom and anyone who has like eyeballs can see it. Anyone who doesn't have eyeballs can see what an incredible mom she was even before she became a mom. And so I realized if she's feeling like that, how are we all feeling, you know? How am I feeling? Someone who works in like the health coaching space, of course I'm seeing all these other coaches that are doing incredibly well and I see other people that are doing workouts on my rest day, I'm seeing other people that are eating this. I don't know why we do this to ourselves. I had a break from all of that and I was more productive and calm and present than I've been in so long and even this morning it was amazing. I woke up um, on time and I had people to train so I came and trained them in this beautiful loft and then I went to gym on a Monday. I've been trying to get to a gym on a Monday for months. Like, I'll get there on the other days, but Mondays are just so tough to get me there. I want to do legs on Monday. Like, that's what I used to do all the time when I was competing. And I hated it, but I loved it because I would always get it done. And it was this thing of just 
I didn't think about it. I just woke up and I got there. And I kind of like woke up when I got to the gym and I was like, whoa, how did I get here? And now I have to do this tough leg day, but also secretly loved it because it was like tapping into my old self. I listened to the most amazing podcast and I was like, okay, 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 I see you. Do yourself a favor and just freaking do this. Switch off a little bit. And I can also tell you now that I know that most of you watching this won't do it. You don't have the freaking guts, just like I didn't for ages, to cut yourself off. When you give yourself two options, do I get to do something that gives me an instant hit like I explained, um, or something hard? And instead, don't give yourself the instant hit option. Your option is I'm either going to do nothing and be bored out of my mind or do something else. And I'm telling you, you sit alone in a room with those two options and you are eventually going to even find that hard thing fun and enjoyable. Alone with your thoughts for long enough and you also start to realize like that you never found comparing yourself to other people fun and that there are healthy doses of things and you can realize what those things were. Like I feel like I could not think clearly or decide what I wanted, all these big questions I'm asking in this transition phase of my life, I couldn't, someone could ask me what I wanted and it was just like the most overwhelming question. And suddenly, after three days, I know it seems ridiculous that this much happened in three days, but I can't tell you what's gone on in this crazy head of mine. I feel calmer, I feel more centered, I feel like I can do this and I feel like you should too. And I feel upset that most of you will not go through with this because you are scared and you can't imagine giving up something you like for three days, but don't be that person. Come on, man. It's three days. Three days of your life. Or do it for one day. Do it for one day and no screens, no dopamine day. Do it on a Sunday and just see how much more you get to like connect with yourself and listen to the own voice in your head. I feel like I've covered a lot of topics. Clearly my written has worn off because my brain was all over the place. So I hope that those of you that do watch this can keep up with what's just gone on. Please, for the love of all things, do this and if you want a more structured explanation of why and how and what then I do have a blog that I wrote about this on Medium so you can also go and read that. Thank you so much please remember to like subscribe tell me what you want to see I hope that you try this please comment below if you try it and yeah just stay conscious friends. Mwah.